Yo guys, Ghost here. So after my last video detailing the Battlefield 2042 technical playtest, I was kind of disappointed that I wasn't able to find a whole lot of jet and heli gameplay. But then I was actually lucky enough to have a tester contact me and he gave me a really in-depth write-up of his experiences from multiple playtest sessions and he also sent me about 60 minutes of unedited high quality gameplay of him using all of the air vehicles on the condition that he remains anonymous. So I've been poring over that footage this last weekend and in this video I wanted to put together some of my thoughts on how the air vehicles are shaping up so far. So today we're going to be discussing the jets. Now before we begin, as always this is just a technical playtest, its primary goal is server stability and that sort of thing, it's not about game balance and anything in this build of the game may or may not be in the final version, so do bear that in mind. So let's dig in with the jets because I know that's what you're all waiting for and I'll begin with this, they look and sound gorgeous, the vapour trail and vapour cloud effects when they're pulling G's just looks really cool and they seem pretty weighty. Generally there's a lot more eye candy in this game when compared to Battlefield 4. And by the way, this guy was running on low graphics at 30 FPS and it still looked pretty damn impressive. Okay, so there are two jets in the playtest, the F-35E Panther for the US side and the Su-57 Felon for the Russians. According to my playtester, he says that to him, the jets feel similar to the maneuverability of Battlefield 5, like they have a lot of weight to them. Those are his words. To me, from what I've seen, I would say that it looks to be a mix of Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 5. They're nowhere near as floaty as they are in Battlefield 5, you don't lose so much altitude when descending down a loop for example, obviously because they have much more powerful engines than a propeller, but they don't seem as snappy as Battlefield 4 either. He also believes that they seem to turn the tightest when going about 100 km per hour, and currently the top speed is around 175 km per hour, although that is unconfirmed. Currently there is no key bindings menu in the playtest, so that's preventing people from using the regular trick of binding pitch up to spacebar for easier looping. So basically whether there is a magical maximum turn speed number like 313 in Battlefield 4, we don't really know, but if there is, it's going to take a bit of digging to find out. Now the F-35 still has VTOL or hover mode, but you can now activate it on the fly by hitting the Z key, which I have mixed feelings about. I'm not sure if there's some speed or altitude requirement for using the hover mode, but I saw somebody flying almost vertically upwards at some speed and then just whack on hover mode and bleed all of their speed almost instantly. And to me, that really smells of a super cheap you know, press this button to win and get on your enemy's tail maneuver. If you guys remember the first Battlefront game, that's what the flying in that game was like. If you wanted to pull a maneuver, you literally just pressed a button. Well, I really hope that's not what hover mode spells out for Battlefield 2042, especially given the fact that only the F-35 has VTOL capabilities and the Su-57 doesn't. Now that aside, like I say, it could be limited by speed or altitude, and if balanced in such a way, I think it could be a welcome addition. In Battlefield 4, hover mode was basically just a gimmick. I always thought it was really cool and iconic to try and strafe a rooftop in hover mode, you know, it always reminded me of Arnold back in the 90s, but having to basically buzz the rooftop in order to activate the landing gear wasn't really the best way to go about it, so hopefully having a hotkey to activate it will make it a bit more viable for some ground strafing shenanigans. Now in terms of weapons, both the jets have a 20mm cannon as their primary and from what I've seen so far, this thing is a pea shooter. It does very little damage to any ground targets and more likely than not, this is simply the default starting weapon and it's primarily meant for air targets, but if I'm being straight up with you, I haven't seen anybody actually accomplish a kill with it yet. For secondary weapons, one jet has two air-to-air -air missiles and these seem to do a similar amount of damage as the Battlefield 4 heat seekers, so about two to three missiles to kill an air vehicle. However, the reload speed of pretty much every vehicle weapon actually is way too fast. So this is the way the heat seeker game is working. You bait out flares with your first missile, then fire the second missile and get a hit, and the other missile will have already reloaded before their flares are back up and then it's basically GG for them. So that definitely needs to be looked into. 
Now, the other jet actually had two air-to-ground missiles, and I'm pretty sure they were supposed to be guided missiles, but that seems to have been broken. So, they were basically just dumb fire missiles, and it seemed like people were really struggling to get kills with them. Now, there were third-person perspectives for the jets, as for all vehicles, but I didn't notice anybody using a rear-view camera or a free-look cockpit camera, so I'm not sure if people simply weren't using them, or if they weren't in the playtest, or perhaps won't be in the game at all. But there is now a vehicle zoom, both in first and third person views, which is kind of needed now, since there is much more limited 3D spotting. I've seen a lot of people speculating that having a third person aiming reticle on the helicopters is going to make them way too easy, but I disagree with that. From the footage I've seen, you can tell that aiming in first person is still going to be the way to go for accuracy, especially when engaging enemy helis mid-air. Also, the zoomed version of the third person camera is actually situated under the wing of the helis, for example, very close to where the rocket pack is sitting. So all the air vehicles in the game have flares as their countermeasure, but the reload time actually differs from vehicle to vehicle. So in the jets, the flares had a 12 second reload time, the little birds flares were 10 seconds, and the attack helis were 15 seconds. And then the Condor, that's the transport hybrid jet thingy, were blisteringly fast at only 7 seconds. Now it seems like the mobility hit and disable mechanics of Battlefield 4 are gone, um, they are instead opting for Battlefield 5 system, where each vehicle has different modules that can be damaged that will impact the performance of the vehicle or its weapons. So you have a little diagram of your vehicle, just like in BF5, and any damaged areas will turn red. Then you have a quick repair option to fix those damaged areas. Basically, think of it as a fire extinguisher or the quick repair from BF5. The main difference being that it doesn't actually repair any armor. If you want to repair, the auto armor regen is back from Battlefield 4. And as far as I could tell, you needed to go around 22 seconds without taking damage for the repair to kick in. Now, the skybox is way bigger than in previous games. It really looks like pilots are going to have an easier time outranging lock-ons, and the ceiling is also pretty high too. However, you will get stuck in it similar to Battlefield 4, although I'd say this one is a little bit more forgiving. You know, as you approach the ceiling, there's a more gradual slowing effect, so you get more of a chance to turn around before getting stuck. Another thing I noticed in this test is that all the vehicle weapons have these bright orange super obvious tracer rounds, and I'm honestly not sure if that's a placeholder thing or if it'll be in the final game. I suspect it's permanent and they're going for better readability here, so you can more easily tell who's firing at you and the direction of fire since there is no 3D spotting. This goes for the AA tanks as well and it makes spotting them much easier. So before we end here, let's touch on the AA tanks because I know that's a hot topic for jet pilots. So it turns out the EBAA Wildcat isn't an IFV, it's actually an AA tank, or at least this version of it is in the playtest. I've seen a little footage of this thing in action too. So it comes equipped with an AA double cannon and two AA missiles. Then there's also a top gunner seat, a front gunner, and a spotting seat. The missiles behave pretty much like the heat seekers of the jets or helis, leading to a two or three hit kill. But surprisingly, the cannons don't seem very good at range. They actually have a lot of spread, and aren't the laser beam that they were in Battlefield 4. All in all, dare I say it, they kind of seem pretty terrible at taking down air vehicles. However, at closer ranges, I noticed that they absolutely shred infantry. So who knows, it looks like DICE actually did take notice of how OP the AA was in BF4. Alright, I'm going to leave it there for today guys. I do have a ton of info on the helis as well, but I'm going to cover that in its own separate video. So don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in that. Like the video if you liked it, don't not like it if you didn't. Subscribe for more Battlefield, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.